Good morning, technically, everyone. We just went through the daylight savings time change here, and I felt like doing a little something weird. So I'm going to do one of my favorite weird old games I used to play back on my Macintosh Power PC. This is called Labyrinth of Time. Let's get going. I hope this comes up fairly quickly. Hmm. 8 p.m. at the end of... Oh! I am really quick going to start that over. First of all, I want to get a, a good picture here of the opening. Also, I didn't get a chance to read it. Hmm. That looks good. Alright, here we go. 8 p.m. The end of a long gray day at work. I'm not even sure what day it is. Your calendar says it's Friday. But things all seem to be pretty much the same anymore. Friday, the end of the week. You know that all you have to look forward to is a long, uneventful week at home. The prospect is not exciting. Jeez, tell us how you really feel. It's hard to say when your days all began to feel the same. Dull as old Chrome and without joy. You decided to lock up, the, lock up the office. Out in the thick air of the city, you pass people in buildings without really seeing them. You know that to them, you have no face either. Was it really as dull as this? Is the air of desperation that hangs over the street real? Or imagined? It doesn't really matter, does it? You descended to the guts of the subway station. With any luck, the train won't break down tonight. It never seems to break down on your way to work. More dull chrome and gray shadows. You keep wondering what's wrong with the city, or with you. You buy your ticket. Is that you standing there with that mullet and beard? It's pretty awesome, actually. You wonder idly if you sh should change your job or move away. You know you won't do either. You wait without eagerness for the subway train. I guess that is you with the mullet and beard. Here it is. You step on board. You board the train. But as they enter, you feel... strange. Suddenly you feel as though you're being pulled in, your, in a direction you never knew existed. Once there, you seem to be pulled inside out. Ah, oh yeah, flash warning. Oh god, I'm sorry people with photosensitivity. <clears throat> well, if you're still with us, let's keep going. You reach for something to hold on to, but there's nothing there. A strange figure appears. Raising his head, he looks at you. I'm sorry to rip you from your normal life, mortal. I have no choice. My name is Daedalus. When I was alive, I went long ago in your world. I was a master craftsman of the ancient world. I am a spirit now. For ages, I have dreamed in the land of the dead. Once, I once served King Minos of Crete. For him, I built a labyrinth near his palace where he kept the bestial mina minotaur of legend. Oh my gosh. The spirit of Minos has something, something, whatever. He has enslaved me, and now the new labyrinth of power of me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, this is very unprofessional, but I'm going to start over and get to that part again real quick. Very unprofessional, I know. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> Alright, so... Here we go. 8, 8 p.m., another long, great, great day. You feel no joy. You step in the guts of the subway, buy your ticket. You know you don't change your job, move away. You wait for the sub train. Here it is, a step aboard. And just enter and feel strange. Pulled in direction, never knew existed. You see, you pulled inside out. Okay, here we go. 
Sorry about that, everyone. And not <laughs> shame warning again. The world itself seems to be changing. You reach for something to hold on to, but there's nothing there. A strange figure appears. There's even somebody looks at you. I'm sorry to rip you from your normal life, Marlon. I have no choice. My name is Daedalus. When I was alive long ago in your world, I was the master craftsman of the ancient world. I'm a spirit now, for ages I've dreamed of the land of the dead. I once served King Minos of Crete, where him I built a labyrinth near his palace, where he kept the bestial miniature of legend. The spirit of Minos has long since been a judge of the dead, but now he hopes to return to the land of the living. He has enslaved me, and now I am building a new labyrinth for him. I can neither refuse nor escape. You must help me. If I am to complete the new labyrinth, the power of Minos will be unstoppable. The new labyrinth is not a simple maze. I am far more powerful than I was in life, and what Minos has made me build is unique. The labyrinth is built outside of your space and time, but penetrates your world in many ages. Once it is finished, the spirit of King Minos will be able to reach any place in the universe, at any time he chooses. He will use the power of the labyrinth to conquer all of space and time. I am able to, unable to resist Minos. He holds my spirit prisoner. I have drawn you out of time and space, the first mortal I could reach. You alone can stop Minos from ruling the lands of the living. I can do little to aid you. All I can say is that you must destroy the labyrinth before it is complete. If you do, I will be freed. This time I will not be trapped again. It is possible you may find the you must find the way, for all of our sakes. It is possible. I wish you good fortune, mortal. You must be clever and careful and swift. I can say no more. The spirit of Daedalus fades from view. Well, this may be awkward and frightening, but it is neither dull nor gray. Wow. Got a little, uh, Mr. Ball's action going on there. Alright, so this is one of my favorite weird old game adventure games. It's kind of like Myst, in that you've got these nodes you can go to. You look around in each one. You've got basically, you know, just a... Uh, little maze here that you gotta work your, way, work your way through. You can control it with the keyboard, like O is open, C is close, P is, well P is open map I guess, S, uh, I thought the push and pull were S and Y, but I guess not. Oh, it's move and take. So move is M, T is take, and so forth. Alright, so open this door. I'm gonna be mostly doing it through uh, keyboard commands because it's much faster. There's nothing in here, but as you can see, as you fill it, go through, you fill in the map. And I want to fill in as much of the map as possible. You'll see there are some places where there are not dead ends that you can't go to, but you'll see. I love the music. I love the atmosphere of this game. And it's one of those ones that you just want to play when you're alone at night. The wardrobe is locked. So you can look at stuff. For the most part, it's just going to say nothing happened. You can try to move stuff. For the most part, it's just going to say you failed to move it. So, yeah, most of these doors don't open. And if you look at the map, they actually don't have any place for you to go, so that means there's no way to go through. Okay, let's see what's in the hallway. Oh my god. Do you think you can fly? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a long way down. So there's no what is command, which is annoying sometimes. Um, I think I probably need to turn the game audio down a bit. Yeah, let's go down to that 10. I can't tell how high it is for you guys, but it's pretty loud on the equalizer. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's actually just go here and then control it here. here. Okay. Back to the game. There's really no like what is command, so if you're looking for things, sometimes it can be hard to know what you need to do. Fortunately, I've played this about a thousand times. Really, 
it's one of those games that if you know what to do, you can get through it in about 20 minutes. Alright, we're to level 2. Sells a strange little portal here. And now we're in the Old West. Fun. The door is locked. Now this is one of those places I was talking about. You see the door? It looks like it should be, uh, openable. I've never found a way to open it. And I don't think anyone else has either. You look it up. Oh, there's the main center again. You can see part of the platform for reaching it. All my time on the internet, I've never seen anyone else being able to open that door. There is at least one more in the game like that. Alright, let's look at the bar. We got ourselves a bottle of brandy there. Oh, let's not pick up. I need to take the bottle of brandy. Whiskey bottle. I don't think there's anything else I can get here. Let's look at some of these graves. Mad Dog Madigan, 1834 to 1882. How'd it come? Good to know. Big Earl Artie, Archery, 1854 to 1875. Annie Cooper, Annie, get your gun. 1860 to 1881. Aw, oh, she's only 21. John Doe, 1871. Don't even know who he is. So I think the main one there is Mad Dog Madigan. Knowing that he died in 1882. There's a clue we'll need that for later. Got an Acme printing press. The date is April 30th. Wildman Daniels, Fred or Alive. I think I prefer him to be Fred. Hey, got a key? Does it work for this thing? Alright, let's try the key in here. The key does not appear to fit. Okay. Huh. We ought to open that first. Let's try opening it. That bridge section is way too heavy to be moved. Alright. Well, we found a bridge section randomly. Let's try moving this cart. Let's try moving it again. Nope, cannot go any further. Gotta move that bridge section. Sometimes when a uh, sound effect interrupts the music, it kind of skips like that. ourselves a sliding puzzle, but we don't know the, um, the solution to it yet, so let's move on. Got ourselves an iron key, and so far I only know of one other thing that's locked. The wardrobe is unlocked. Professor Martin Garrett, April 1912. I begin this journal as I prepare for my second expedition to the Ziggurat of the Sorcerer King near Uxmo. A full account of my fat last first attempt to excavate. The site appears in my journal for 1910, but briefly the ex but briefly. The excavations which have begun so well ended in failure. We were successful in locating the site and in my preliminary dig, but failed to gain access to the hidden treasure room that was apparently found by the notorious outlaw and adventurer Mad Dog Madigan in the year 1880. Oh, we know he died in 1882. Is there honey to hydrate a bit? 
Legend has it that Madigan found the chamber and met to return, and they kept a map that revealed the treasure chamber. How many times I've wished I could find that map, if it exists. I even visited the site of the town of Revolver Springs, where Madigan is said to have been buried, but I was unable to locate the old cemetery. I've always wondered he had the map with him when he died. But I've gotten ahead of myself. The reason the ziggurat of the Sorcerer King is so fascinating is that he, whose name is not recorded anywhere, nearly conquered the whole of Mayan civilization during his brief and terrible reign. If I'm to prove my theories about the fall of the Mayans, I simply have to... find his secret room. I am now convinced that the mysterious talisman he said to have does not exist... does... said to have used does exist, and may be hidden there. As the source of his power, it promises to be a unique example of Mayan art and may tell us a great deal about the dark side of their beliefs. It is no exaggeration to say that my career depends on this discovery. All my work has pointed toward conclusions that can only be proved by what I believe is hidden under that cigarette. Okay, excuse me for a second. Next day. I have had some trouble getting supplies for the journey to the cigarette, but I think I might be able to leave them within the next few days. I cannot really believe that we will find success this time. I can only try, of course. Perhaps the feeling of doom that oppresses me will vanish once we begin the expedition. It sounds superstitious, but part of this feeling is due to the loss of my lucky shirt that during the last during the last excavation. In a hurry to get back to the city, I seem to have lost the shirt. I began, th I began thinking of it as, my, as lucky after my first few archaeological digs. Since I was always wearing it when major discoveries were made, I began to wear the shirt all the time in a foolish belief that it was a lucky token. And now that it's lost, I keep feeling that my luck is lost with it. It's strange how we can develop these ideas, even when we are educated. All I know is that I would feel much more hopeful if I could pack that shirt with the rest of my things. Oh my god, how much longer is this? Ah, three days later. All the supplies are ready. We leave for the site of the Sorcerer King Ziggurat tomorrow morning. There's still a sensation of doom hanging over me. I hope that it eases when we leave the city. But I cannot really believe that our expedition will meet with its success. Hoo-ha. Alright, that was the journal of Professor blah 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 blah. So he's looking for the tomb of Mad Dog Madigan. Or the, the grave. So, so he had a treasure map to the lost treasure chamber of the Mayan Sorcerer King. We will learn more about him later. Uh, I got an iron key, I got a map, I got a card key. Alright, let's go through this innocuous door that could not possibly hurt anyone. Oh my god. Oh, I don't like that. See, Morgan the Magician, he knows all, he tells all. Explore the amazing maze of mirrors. Oh, sorry, at your own risk. Oh, I don't want to go in there. Okay. Well, it's better than waiting outside. Alright, we are in a maze within a maze. See, the maze has differed. I can go back out to the major section. Or I can navigate back into that mirror maze. Uh, I'm going to try to fill in all the map. two pieces in here. Oh, hey, it's Morgan. Morgan the Magnificent, or whatever they said his name was. Uh, oh, it costs a coin. Uh, I've only got two. Why don't I see what else I can use this on? So I am... Oh, I am actually aware that if you use any quarters on Morgan, it does become a soft lock situation. The game is not very nice about that, and you never know when you're soft locked. So, we're gonna avoid that. Actually, if you put the quarter in, his prediction says you're going to wish you had that coin back. It's technically early, VG. All right, so we've got a card key here. And use it in this machine. Oh, need to get closer to operate that. So let's take a look at the card key. Not the look at the machine. Back to our inventory. Use the card key in the machine. Uh, what does this say? That says something in Japanese. It's like Kema, Kema, Kema. 
I have to look up. Let me look up Katakana real quick. I can't remember them all very well. <laughs> BG Shrine. Nice, thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, so it is... K... Yeah. Uh, Kichi. Kichia. I was wrong about the middle one. That's Chi. So Kichia. I don't know what that means. Uh, we, oh, we put in our card key. Let's push a button. Uh, I think I'm gonna go to the green one. Alright, where'd we end up? Our items have been ripped apart and sent across the galaxy. Where the hell are we? New World's Development. New World's Development, a vision of Terra Nova development, welcomes you to the digital library on the NWD space station in Earth orbit. We hope you find your visit enjoyable and informative. Uh-oh, I'm on a space station. The public interface to the library archives is a simple terminal located south of this room. From the terminal's main menu, you can select a wide variety of subjects using an easy point-and-click display. Within the library archives is a vast array of information. It will take you several years it will take several years to transfer the remainder of human experience to our database. We regret that the rest of the space station is closed due to the, to the public due to the cast cost of liability insurance, but there are several windows in the library hallway which offer a view of the space that surrounds us, as well as a spectacular view of the Earth below. We hope you'll enjoy your stay with us. On leaving, you may return to your teleportation station or continue on to the NWD library. In case of emergencies, a special emergency transport is available for use south of the library terminal. Whoops. New World's Development, a division of Terra Nova Development, the sky is not the limit. So I guess we're on some sort of space station. Uh, there's the terminal they were talking about. Oh, and the window they were talking about does not look over the rest of the space station. I see the maze center again. This actually doesn't seem like part of the space station. Alright, there's another machine in the back of the library. Let's take a look at this interface. New World's Development. I've got a couple things to read here. Let's start with the message from the librarian. I've lost contact with the company headquarters on Earth and with the Lunar Settlement as well. There was a little, war there was a little warning. Over the past few days, there have been many sightings of a creature who calls himself King Minos, the name of the legendary king of ancient Crete. Most of these sightings involve very unlikely events, such as, quote-unquote, Minos, appearing suddenly in the middle of a United Nations conference and somehow transporting the Security Council to parts unknown. Many apparently supernatural events involve this King Minos and have been reported from all over... have been reported from all over... The world. It seems impossible that a single person or entity could appear simultaneously in every nation of the Earth. I hesitate to repeat these stories about mystical powers, death rays, and miraculous events. Minos has been credited with the causing volcanoes to erupt, tidal waves to wipe out islands and coasts, and all manner of natural disasters. Minos has appeared on television and video phone channels throughout the world and demands that all nations submit to him. As soon as any government tries to mount a defense, Minos seems to appear just in time to pre prevent them. Most of the world's nations are already sur have already surrendered to by the time I lost communication. As the communications link was severed, a power search devastated the library archives. Almost all data has been destroyed, leaving little still available at the terminal. I was alone on the station at the time, and no message and no person has reached me since. I'm not sure how safe the station's teleport teleportation devices are. In fact, I'm not sure there's any place to go. I've been trying to recover the library data for the past 12 hours. I suppose I do this out of duty since it started to... Oh my gosh, there's so much to read. Okay. So King Minos is appearing throughout all time and space at every point in history. The librarian, uh, there was a power surge that erased most of the library archives. Uh, yeah, and now he's finding references to King Minos throughout history as if he appeared at every part of time as well as space. Uh, no, the librarian's just wondering if he's actually the King Minos from Greek mythology. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to read this all. Okay. Whatever he is, it seems the more likely that he is an alien being, or a whole army of aliens who look alike, he cannot be the spirit of an ancient king. How long will it take before this creature notices me in orbit? 
I will continue these notes by I'm able to get F after I'm able to get some rest. I hope that there will be someone someday to read them. Hey, that's me. About the library. Uh, tearing over development. Uh, yeah, okay, there's a bunch of stuff here. I'm just going to stick to the most important ones that I know of. Uh, so basically, this is just an orbiting library. Uh, according to the history, the Terranova development people are the actual, like, founders of the company who made this game. Uh, Wormkeep Entertainment. And, uh, basically they both, like, became super rich from making this game, and then they became eccentric. One of them is, like, in a car that or constantly orbits the Earth. Like, you know, the Elon Musk car they shot to space, unfortunately. But he was in it, and he, uh... That's how he died, and the other one, I don't quite remember, actually. Yeah, he says, As Terno development branched out into other ventures, Shank continued his active role in game design and illustration up until his tragic death while trying to convert a convertible sports car into a space vehicle. To this day, that experiment continues as a stable orbit with Shank at the wheel, and it's known by astronomers, astronomers as the Ragtop Satellite. Yeah. And the other one, Michael Todorovic. Todorovic? After Shanks' tra tragic death, trying to convert a convertible space car. Okay. However, at the high point of his success, Toroda Rich Mysterious disappeared during a news conference as he about to become the first silent human teleported to be teleported across California. A power surge apparently interrupted the teleportation process. It was not clear where, or even if, Todorovic might have been reintegrated. So these guys wrote some pretty interesting deaths for themselves. And again, it's just the uh, company was built on the company that made this game. And they made a whole bunch of space stations and moon bases. Great guys. Alright, science and technology. Uh, just a little bit about the teleporters. Everything else is destroyed. Oh uh, yeah, it just tells you how the teleporters were developed. And again, that's just one of the founders of this... who made this game. Michael Todorovic made them. Alright. <laughs> uh, I think most of this is destroyed. Yeah. African history destroyed, that's since uh, Central American history, most of it's destroyed. Uh, we're going to learn about Mayan culture for real, real quick. The Sorcerer King, there he is. One legend of the ancient, okay let me get a drink first. Oh man, I'm going to need so much water. This is where most of the text of the game is. One legend of the ancient Maya concerns a powerful sorcerer king who was known, who was said to have lived near Oshmal. Or is it Oshmal? I'm not sure. His name is not known. Legends say because after he was overthrown, his enemies were. His name is not known. Legends say because after he was overthrown, his enemies wiped out any reference to him from their records and destroyed all of the monuments the sorcerer king had built during his brief and terrible reign. The sorcerer king seems to have studied the black arts from a master magician, then turned his magical power toward conquest. The legends describe a mysterious talisman which the king used to overpower his enemies. The king is supposed to have pointed the talisman at the keystone or foundation stone of an enemy's palace and the talisman would destroy that keystone. The entire palace would then be destroyed and the king would take over the enemy's territory. The last of his enemies are supposed to have joined together and attacked the king unexpectedly. Once helpless, he was sacrificed to his own dark gods. Only the scientist, the only scientist to take any of this seriously was Professor Martin Garrett. We have his journal. Who had a brilliant early career but wasted his later life in an obsession with, a ridiculous, with this ridiculous folk, folk tale. After his second unsuccessful attempt to find the evidence or, or his theories that the Mayan ziggurat or a pyramid and he that he claimed had been the home of the Sorcerer King, Garrett's reputation was ruined. He was never able to obtain sponsorship for a third expedition and ended his life in obscurity and shame in 1935. Aww. Only 23 years after he wrote that journal. Excuse me, holy crap. Nichols, my cat is doing weird stuff all around my feet right now. What do you want? Okay. His colleagues did find a number of other ziggurats in the region, which had been completely destroyed during the Mayan period. No one jokingly attributed this to the crazy Garrett's Sorcerer King. Oh, she's running up and down the stairs. She scared the crap out of me. I thought someone was coming into my house. Ah, the Old West. We got ghost towns and famous outlaws. Revolver Springs. Alright, so this is just about the town I found earlier. Uh, the 
Anything important here? Okay, I'm... The sin the ring you left and found in the spring of 1882. On May 1st of that year, that's after the day we know of, April 30th, May, uh, 1882, that's the day after we visited, a massive earthquake struck the town. A fire began, and the entire town of Revolver Springs burned to the ground in less than an hour. Survivors hoped to rebuild immediately, but the railroad chose instead to relocate, relocate its station to the nearby town of Dog Breath. Without a single source of income, Revolver Springs was never rebuilt. The inhabitants scattered and the nearby mines closed. The burnt-out buildings of the town were quickly were absorbed by the desert, and it takes an experienced eye to locate the site, even today. So now we know that a massive earthquake wiped out the town. Uh, and Famous Outlaws. Probably just talks about Mad Dog Mad again. Yep, there he is. Alright, I am going to read this. How long is it? Oh, it's very long. Okay. Augustus Mad Dog Madigan was an unusual sort of outlaw. He considered himself an explorer and adventurer who was constantly troubled by local law enforcement officials who just didn't appreciate him. Since most of his explorations were funded by the proceeds from bank and train robberies, the local sheriff's attitude is understandable. Madigan hated his name. Legend had it that at the age of 14 he located his father, not an easy task in itself, and shot him for not deserting, not for deserting Mad Dog's, Madigan's mother, but for inflicting the name Augustus on him. That day marked the first of Madigan's misunderstandings of the law, and he set out for Mexico on the first of his explorations. Several stagecoaches provided the funds needed for the adventure, and the pattern of Madigan's life was set. During the next 30 years, Madigan repeated the pattern, staying for a while in New Mexico, Arizona, or California, then having a misunderstanding and traveling off to the horizon. He claimed to have visited Tahiti, Hawaii, and the Caribbean during a seafaring phase, and having a trail on horseback to the Tierra de Fuego at the southernmost tip of South America. Madigan was so frustrated not being able to ride the rest of the way to Antarctica that he had a mis misunderstanding and left about a dozen people dead. He immediately set off for his exploration of Canada. Little is known about these northern adventures, we do know that from 1878 to 1880, Madigan settled down in the town of Revolver Springs, California. He apparently had a good relationship with the town sheriff until late to 1880, when the sheriff discovered what Madigan's first name was. This led to another misunderstanding, and after which Madigan headed for the wild country of Mexico. The remainder of his story is known only from the account of Revolver, Revolver Springs tavern keeper Rick Unland, which heard it from a Madigan on his return from Mexico. Madigan told a tall tale of finding several huge pyramids in the Badlands, mostly overgrown, but visible enough to a nearby observer. He claimed that these structures were near Ushmal, and in fact that he's known there are numerous Mayan ruins there. In one of these ziggurats, pyramids, Madigan apparently discovered a hidden treasure room, cleverly hidden and sealed. Madigan never revealed how he'd gotten inside, but claimed to have the whole thing described in a map that he always kept on his person. The outline intended to return to the ruins in the autumn and pack horses to with pack horses to carry the treasure, but unfortunately he never made it. The day after his return to Revolver Springs, he was killed by the widow of the town's sheriff. If the map existed, it must have been buried with him since no one else ever came back with the mine treasure. Alright, more about Mad Dog. Alright, that's American history. Oh, South America? Nothing. Sorry, South America. Nothing survived the apocalypse. Antarctic? Nothing. Uh, Asian? Nothing. Australian? Nothing. Holy crap. European. Ancient Crete. Legend of the Labyrinth. I am going to read this one because it's my favorite article in any game ever. Alright, let me get a drink. This is the last article, I, I promise. In the ancient days, before the land of Greece was called Greece, the Mediterranean Sea was ruled by the people of Crete. The Cretans, Cretans, the, that's where the word Cretan comes from, but the Cretans in turn were ruled by King Minos, whose palace was built at Knossos near the sea. The merchants and navies of Crete sailed throughout the, that part of the world, selling Cretan goods to the Greeks and others, and taxing them for protection from the pirates of the seas. For the most part, these pirates were Cretans. But they collected the tax anyway. An Athenian named Aedlus was the greatest craftsman of his time. He was, hey, we know that guy. He was, we met him. We met him. He was forced to flee Athens and became the master builder of Minos' kingdom on Crete. This meant that his many inventions gave him the favor of King Minos. The palace at Knossos was equipped with three different systems for running water. One for drainage, one for drinking, and one for sewage. How's that? Okay. Minos' queen, Pasiphae, 
and her daughters became very fond of Daedalus and often asked them for news and inventions or for help with their problems. So things continued for a long and happy time. Some say that Minos angered Poseidon, god of the sea. Others, that Queen Pasiphae boasted and offended Aphrodite, the goddess of love. For whatever reason, it happened that a great white bull appeared on the island of Crete, the largest and most handsome bull ever seen. Note, for the missing part of this story, ask the librarian for the adult password. We're gonna have to go do that. Let's go get the adult password. I wanna know the rest of the story. God damn it. And so, Minos enraged the Daedalus. Yeah, you're gonna have to know the rest of the story to understand why. Uh, heck, this is a uh, this is a protected stream. So the missing part of the story is that Pasiphae asked Daedalus to build a hollow cow so she could get inside while the most handsome and po powerful white bull anyone had ever seen um, used the hollow cow for pleasure. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And. Uh, Having done so, she became pregnant with the Minotaur. Um, and that's how the Minotaur was born. Yay! Bestiality. And so Minos, enraged at Daedalus, forced him to build his greatest and most lasting monument, the Labyrinth. This was a huge and confusing maze, more vast than any maze seen in the ancient or modern world. Daedalus himself was imprisoned together with his son Icarus beneath the labyrinth. At the labyrinth's center, King Minos placed the Minotaur, the beast with the head of a bull, and the body of a man who was the son of Queen Pasiphae. Go Pasiphae, nice. The Minotaur raged and thundered to the labyrinth's heart, but could not escape. Every year Minos sent the, to the great cities for a tribute of gold, and now, for young men and women. These men were sent to the labyrinth, and they were slain and devoured by the Minotaur. No one could stand against the navies of King Minos, and so the tribute continued for many years. During these years, Daedalus and his son, Icarus, escaped from beneath the labyrinth, but that tragic story does not concern us now. Uh, that's the one where Icarus uh, flies, flies too close to the sun, and his wings melt, and he falls into the sea. Eventually, a Cretan ship from Athens was uh, uh, brought from Athens, a shipment of young men and women. With them was Theseus, the heir to the throne of Athens. Theseus won the love of Ariad Ariadne, one of the daughters of Minos, and she swore to help him kill the Minotaur. While Theseus was brought to the labyrinth, when Theseus was brought to the labyrinth, labyrinth Ariadne was waiting for him just inside. Silently, she handed him a razor-sharp sword forged by Daedalus, and she ca herself carried the magical ball of string that the master craftsman had given her. She tied one end of the string to a pillar, and it rolled out ahead of them, leading them straight to the heart of the maze. When they reached the center of the labyrinth, the Minotaur leapt at out at Theseus, and they fought a deadly battle. The Minotaur was much stronger than a man. Theseus was short, was a short, wiry prince. If half the labyrinth... If half the labyrinth's minotaur's blows had landed, Theseus would have been battered to the floor. The prince danced in and out between, beneath the weak horns and struck again and again. At last, as the sharp horn swept over his head, Theseus struck with all his strength, and the minotaur's huge head went flying from his shoulders. Grabbing the head as proof of his victory, the prince followed Ariadne out of the labyrinth. As they emerged from this earth itself, as they emerged, the earth itself began to shake. The maze and the palace of Gnosis were toppled to the ground. Theseus, Ariadne, and the other Athenians ran for the harbor, where they sank Minos' ships and set sail for Athens. The rule of King Minos was ended. While the Minos is remembered for his evil deeds, he while Minos is remembered for his evil deeds, he was considered in ancient and medieval times to have been the first real judge in Europe. In his early reign, he was famous for delivering justice from his throne. Indeed, his reputation may, may have outlived him in more ways than one. When Dante had visions of his, the Inferno, King Minos presided over a court of the dead. The ancient king had the task of choosing what part of hell to send souls to, so it would seem that his power continued to grow even after death. Since no other poet has ventured there since Dante, it's hard to say what Minos has become since then. There we go. So, that is the origins of King Minos, the Minotaur, and this labyrinth. It all started with a hollow cow. And Queen Minos just throwing it around. I think I am stuck here because I have no Oh, you barely avoid getting hit with a rock. Okay. So, you can get through that place once without protection. You go through there without a helmet again, you cannot. You, I don't think you die in this game, but you just can't. Ah, here's the maze center, and this is actually the bridge platform we're going to be using to get there eventually. There's quite a bit left, though. This room is just one big um, square. There is a X here. We'll take it. 
think it's a Labors. Labors. Labors? Anyways, that's what Labyrinth is named after, that type of axe. I don't remember why. Sure, it's an interesting story. Oh, we are back in another mini maze. This one is a medieval maze. There's usually nothing in these mazes to find, so you can usually just fill them out. There is one thing to find here, though. Like I said, you won't be able to get through here without protection again, so let's take our helmet and let's put it on. You are now wearing the helmet. Oh, let's back up. That was my old save file, which is completed. It's standing there at the end of the game. Okay, I think I filled in the map, pretty much. Got a little bit left here. Yep, we're all good. Alright, nothing here. Hey, look here, we got a uh, can of paint. We're just gonna take that. It looks like you can take it, just pick it up. Although there's a lot of stuff it looks like you can take, like these cups and stuff, but that's not for you. It's not for you. Alright, so this one has always confused me. But you can look at the uh, jukebox, and you can look at the lower jukebox. Like, I look in there, I'm not, I'm not sure. There's like... Okay, so here's my problem. You can take something from here. It says, you take the silver key. I've never been able to see it. I've never been able to see where that key is. But it's there somewhere. Let's look at these pictures. An old Cadillac. Pretty sure these are the uh, sports cars that the guy was talking about. Belong to the uh, Shrink, I think his name was. Max Shrink. Alright, told it. Looks like it is coin operated. Want 25 cents. Alright. Hey, maybe we can call someone. Let's, uh, let's use the phone. That's not for you. Complete waste of energy. Alright, uh, well, we got a coin here. Let's see if we can make a call. We insert a coin in the slot. Oh! Oh, good. Wait, telephone service is only five cents. Well, not gonna look this gift horse in the mouth. We got ourselves a whole bunch of quarters now. Fourteen of them. Well, I guess it was 13 that fell out of the machine. I already had one. So, uh, yeah. Embarrassment of riches here, guys. Let's use one. And the coin operated toilet door. Ooh, now we can get through. Oh. Uh, well, that's not a toilet. It is yet another mini maze. This is the third of three. matters for anything. Alright, we're through the maze. We got ourselves a drill. Oh, take, not, okay, take the drill. Wait, what am I missing here? I went to the hedge ma- oh. Oh yeah, okay, this is a uh, office I can't get into yet. So we got ourselves a drill. 
Anything else on the other hobby horse? Nope. Or sawhorse. Oh, hey, I need this. Let me take a picture. Uh, let's uh, just open up a paint thing and paste that in the paints. Back to the game. Alright, so we got our code to put into the uh, sliding puzzle now. Let's go back to it. There's a room there that we can't get into. Sometimes I forget my way through here. There we go. Unfortunately, if you want to go back to the toilet, we gotta to use another coin. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna leave. Back through the medieval maze to... protective headgear. Alright, so let's go back. We've got a couple things we can do. We got some keys, we got some items. Real quick, uh, let's do the inventory. And the card key. Alright, so earlier we saw a blue button that we didn't use. Let's try that now. The orange button actually just leads back to the mirror maze. Hey, another place that seems pretty futuristic. Where are we? New World's Development, a division of Terra Nova Deve Development, welcomes you to the Museum on the Moon. We hope you find your visit enjoyable and informative. Throughout the museum, you'll find that wonders like this, which explain the exhibits. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask the uniform security guard in each room. Alright, and the museum was founded by New World's Development. Again, we're trying to preserve human history off-site, off-world, because, well, shit happens. I'm not going to read all these, but let's just see what they are. Renaissance loot, fought between the 15th and 17th centuries. Breathtaking. Got ourselves an alarm clock, or a cuckoo clock, table clock. Uh, I don't think any of this is actually important to the story. So we're finding out that these are all things that um, one of the developers had in his, uh, Michael Todorovich had in his attic. And they all seem to be from Professor Garrett's private collection. So we've actually seen some of these throughout other places in the uh, labyrinth. Like that gramophone was in the uh, hotel room. Uh, the red unicycle. Yeah, so most of these are just Professor Garrett. Oh my gosh, boobies. I have to edit that out. Marble statue. The origin of this interesting female statue is shrouded in mystery. It was discovered in the luggage compartment of 1993 Morgan Plus 8 Roasters, formerly the property of the late Bradley W. Schenk, a founder of Terra Nova Development. I think we saw that card in one of those pictures. Ever to date, the statue have been inconclusive, and its provenance is as much a mystery as the fact that it could fit in a luggage, luggage compartment. The statue became the property of New World's Development because no one was in the parking garage at the company when the statue was discovered. I guess it's ours. Um, I'm not sure that might be a reference to Terra from the year 5000. Seems rather esoteric, though. Hey, this one's broken. What the hell? It's display damage. See curator for further information. So there's a movie that was on MST3K called Terror from the Year 5000, and early on they get like a statue that looks kind of like that from the Year 5000 through a uh, time machine. So yay. 
This window faces on a typical lunar landscape outside the lunar settlement of the New World's development. Blah, blah, blah. Depending on the time of day, a spectacular earth rise may be visible here. Sometimes the entire settlement will be open to the public, including some day the entire settlement will be open to the public, including guided tours to the various spectacular landmarks that make the moon a unique vacation spot for the entire family. Until then, please enjoy this simple panoramic view as a taste of things to come. Please refrain from touching the window. We wouldn't want another accident. Hmm. Well, I guess that explains the, uh, tombstone. But who buried him? What do we got here? Some sort of belt? Mine now? I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear it. I'm styling, bitches. Ah. Oh. Yeah. It flashes while I wear it. Nice. Alright. So, we don't quite know what these lovers do. Um, for right now, we're just gonna move a couple of them. Randomly. Wow, I wonder why I'm not moving the purple one. We'll find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Alright, we're done exploring space for now. Let's uh, head back to the mirror maze. Alright, so now that I've got a bunch of quarters, I can talk to Morgan the Magnificent. In fact, let's do it once. Basically, he just gives you clues on things that happen in the game. If you're stuck and need a hint, you talk to him. But, uh, don't use all your quarters or else you're stuck. And he will tell you you're a fool for using your quarter. The future is what the past has made it. Let's do one more. So that one is basically telling you that you can change things in the past to get different outcomes. Probably the biggest part of this labyrinth of time is that it permeates all of time as well as all of space. If you cannot reach your goal, you must learn to build bridges. Alright, so he's just telling me how to get to the maze center. One more. One more. He used your last one, he, he, the, the thing just says, you're going to wish you had that coin back. A blank piece of paper is full of potential. Alright, so I know I gotta use a blank piece of paper somewhere. But where? <laughs> Creepy clown again. Getting out of here. Uh, Alright, so I've got the code to that um, thing upstairs. Let's go see what's in that room I couldn't reach. Alright, I need 7, 2, 9, 10 on the top row. Oops, I need to get two up there. Seven, two, nine, ten. One, eleven, five, thirteen. What am I doing? 1, 11, 5, 13. 8, 15, 14, 12. Hmm. Oh, and the last row was already good. It was 3, 4, 6. Alright, we did it. Oh, hey, what do we got here? Oh, we got the cask of Amontillado. Ha! Nice Edgar Allan Poe reference. Sick reference, bro. Alright, we got ourselves a... Bicycle pump? And a golden key. And then the rest of the thing just goes back to where we were in the hedge maze. So we could go back to the other place, but we don't need to. Uh, do I have the key to the store? I do! Okay. Use. Let's open the door to Slade and Barchard, private detectives. Alright. Hey, we got the Maltese Falcon. Nice. I thought that didn't exist. We got ourselves a uh, iron key and a notes. A notes, that's right. I speak English good. 
Sleep and departure. Private detectives. Assignment. Locate grave of Big Earl Ardrey. Died 1875. Revolver Springs, California. Hey, we saw his grave. Problems. The town destroyed in an earthquake and fire on May 1st, 1882. Cemetery site and tombstones discovered, but no graves located. Research. Find local newspapers for information on the possible relocation of graves before May 1st, 1882. Report results to client, Judith Ardrey, in Abalone, Arizona. Alright, so the graves may have moved. But we don't know where. And also, we don't care. The professor would care. We don't. Alright, so we also got a golden key. And that one goes to this door. The silver key was in the jukebox, and again, I don't... I can't tell where it is in the jukebox. I think it's in the coin return. I might actually have to put a coin in there first. For that to make sense. I've never tried that before. Let's take this teapot. Make ourselves a spot tea. We got ourselves a closet with a bucket, a broom, and a roll of paper. Hey, the blank paper that uh, Morgan told us about. What's this all then? Oh. Drop off laundry in a newspaper for room 14. Hey, that's uh, Professor Garrett's room. Got ourselves a code here, but we don't have any, any codes to put in. Uh, well, we got a roll of paper. We did see a printing press back in the Old West. Let's go there. I think this is my favorite song in the game. No portal noise, just the song with the wind blowing. Ah, very calm. Alright, we got a printing press and a piece of paper. Alright. We need the leather. And back up. Let's take the paper. Take the paper. What's it say? Oh, no, oh, that's not it. The Daily Bullet, straight from the revolver. April 30th, 1882. Cemetery moved for a railroad extension. All graves in the Revolver Street Cemetery have, cemetery have been moved as the railroad extension project continues with the... Alright. Indians leave town. After today's minor earthquake, every Indian in Revolver Springs disappeared without... Alright. So they moved the graves just before the earthquake hit and the town burned to the ground. That paper tells us where, but we can't read the whole paper, which is fine. Hey, that bridge section moved. Now it's just a door. And now that door's open. Oh, cool. Whoso pulleth this sword from the stone shall be the true-born king of all Britain. Let's take it. You appear to be the true-born king of all Britain. Oh, huh, good. Good to know. Hey, that door was open when I came in. There's something behind it. Wow, how'd I know that? Oh, take that pick up. You take the lantern. You know, those things would be very, would be very useful for it to be... Uh, actually, uh, let's leave this off for now. I'll show you where it's useful. Even though it's dark in here, it's not useful in here. Uh, still no way to open that door. Alright, and that's where the music loops back around to the beginning. Still, this music is all, um, public domain, by the way. The, uh, makers of this game just got it from a, uh, pretty public use library. Uh, public domain library. Public use is something different. But, um... Yeah, you actually can hear it. You actually hear it sometimes in other places. Like, back in the 90s, there was a show called The Adventures of Pete and Pete, and they also used this exact same music, so... It's very nostalgic for me. Alright, we got a lantern. Um... We got... Oh, we gotta give the paper to the... Room... F we gotta give the paper to Professor Garrett here. Oh. Let's, uh... There it is. Use place. Can we read more of it? 
Uh, I probably could, but it's too far away. Too small. Uh, that door's still locked. Alright, there was one door we couldn't open here. Now we have a screwdriver to open it with, though. Uh, there's going to be a noise warning here in a second. Right here. Noise warning. Okay. Let's open that door. Hey, look at this. This is a coin operated newspaper dispenser. There we go. Let's use one of our coins. And close the machine. Must be nice. Alright. Actually, can we ignore that if we use it? Nope, we can't. Ah, newspaper. Alright, can we use that? Nope, we can't. Let's look at it. Subway car vanishes. Please suspect foul play. Theft or special effect. Technology indistinguishable from magic. So it's talking about my disappearance from the world. So apparently I haven't gone... People didn't... Like, not notice that I'm gone. Or at least the subway car is gone. Alright. Noise warning. Huge, huge noise warning. Seriously, if you, uh... Are listening on headphones? Uh, turn it down right now. Did you know that I would teach you not to cross the street against the light? That hurt. Okay, so one of the things about this game is that there was a little video there of you falling all the way down into this weird place. That's actually the uh, the cover art for the game. But uh, it just plays super fast now. I think it might be tied to the speed of your um processor, which back in the day would have been like when like 1440 baud, so or measured in like single digits, so yeah, this is different now. Alright, so I gotta find another one of these. Oh, I went out the wrong way. So the trick here is that you're in another maze, but the maze appears to be too surreal to map. Uh, so you came in this room and you leave through the north. So basically you want to just go to another one of those types of room and then go as far north as you can. Or was it south? I think it was south. Yeah, you just want to come out the other side of the maze. So you want to go south. There we go. Eventually you'll, the maze map, the, the thing loops around on itself except for that room. And since you can enter from one side, you can leave from the other. I'm not quite sure how that works, but that's how it works. Oh hey, we seem to be in the middle of the uh, the middle of the Andes Mountains, or something like that. There's the May Center again, we're at the top of the ziggurat. And let's uh, move these guys. We'll move the column. What that does is it opens these doors to the left and right. However, going inside, it's pitch black and it's too dark to go in there. We seem to have the uh, way to fix this. Now normally, if you come down here without the lantern, which you notice the lantern was hidden behind a door, you are soft-locked. There's no way to get past this. You can't get back up. So, if you don't have the lantern, you're screwed. Thank you, game. Alright, inside of mine, ziggurat. Ziggurat? Something like that. We got ourselves a purple lever. lever. Uh, we got ourselves a yellow lever. And a dirty shirt. Ah, here's the column. There's no time for that. It won't move. That's the column I used to open this place. Uh, let's look at the door. Can we open it? With what? A chainsaw? This is the other door I mentioned. You cannot get through that door ever. So... I don't know if it's just never going to be opened or if there's a mystery that people have not found. Alright, so we've got another set of red, yellow, and purple yelp levers. I moved the yellow and the purple. I'm sorry. I moved the yellow and the red earlier. Let's try the purple. Oh, oh my god. I'm so sorry. Man. What have I done? 
You feel better, but less sure of your whereabouts. Well, I know where I am already. We've been here before. Well, we found Professor Garrett's lucky shirt. Now we just have to get it to his, uh... His room service table. This game is just getting the bridge sections into position, pretty much. So we're going to be just looping around until we get all the bridge sections together. Uh, let's see. So if we try to put the lucky shirt directly onto the table while it's still dirty... What on earth would have made me do that? So, we're gonna have to clean it. And we got the laundry chute right here. Down the hatch. Good. That needed to be cleaned. And... Hey, look. There it is. Now that we found the dirty shirt, and now we found his lucky shirt, and evidence about where the town has moved to, Let's take a look at that journal. I'm sure it must have changed. I'm gonna turn off the lantern. I'm not sure if the lantern has limited fuel, but I'm never, I, I don't trust it. Oh, hey, look, I mean, it's mostly the same up until 4-7. But 4-8, I cannot believe my good fortune. Although I do not understand it, just as I was preparing to leave, one of the hotel maids brought me, of all things, my lucky shirt. I had a newspaper. I have no idea how the shirt got here, but, th but that was only the beginning of my amazement. The newspaper that was with it was not a local, or even a new one. It was nothing less than the last newspaper to be printed in the town of Revolver Springs, before the town was burned in 1882. One surprise led to another. The newspaper says the local cemetery was being moved at the time, the graves already being relocated to a nearby hill. Only the tombstones had yet to be moved there on April 30th, when the paper was printed. They had no way of knowing that then the town, that the town, that their town would be destroyed the very next day. I now know the location of the grave of Mad Dog Madigan, the outlaw who first discovered the ziggurat of the Sorcerer King. I have delayed our ex expedition to the ziggurat with, le and will leave tomorrow for the site of Revolver Springs, where I believe I'll find Madigan's grave, and I hope the map that will reveal the entrance to the treasure chamber underneath, underneath the ziggurat. I was so excited that I had to telegraph my old friend Cornelius Lyons with the news. Cornelius, who has been excavating on the island of Crete, has made his own discovery. He believes he has found the tomb of King Minos himself in the cave near the hills of Lado. In the hills near Lado. One second, while I take a drink. Near Grey Robbers, he has sealed the cave with a heavy iron door locked with a combination lock. He should be entering the cave the first time tomorrow. As luck would have it, today was his 40th birthday, so I was able to reply to his message with a double congratulation. All that sense of doom is lifted for me. I am now positive that this expedition will meet with success. Alright, so his 40th birthday is... I think it was April 8th. April 8th, 20, uh, 1912. So his actual birth date is April 8th, 1872. So let's uh, go back to that iron door that was just outside here. So we're going to do April 8th, 72. Let's uh, step back and open that door. Nice. Well, I sure hope Cornelius Lyons met with a happy end. Oh my god. Well, somebody's alive. He's not, but somebody is. Ooh, nice hat. It's mine now. Thanks, Cornelius Lyons. I got a new hat. Stylish. Yeah, pith helmet. My pith helmet. 
Uh, okay, the Tomb of King Minos. You courageously open the sarcophagus. And take the Cretan or ornament. Cretan? Cretan? That's all we're here for. So the Pith Helmet just acts as another uh, protection against the Falling Rocks area. Hmm. Well? Alright, usually if you move... The, the lady's scream earlier was supposed to be the bridge platform falling on this... Uh, subway car. It gets crushed, and then you can move the bridge platform back the other way. And then puff it up with the bicycle pump. That's the only use for the bicycle pump. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't crush the car, I guess. I think if you do the one in the, uh, museum before you do the one in the temple, it crushes the car. Oh well. Uh, sound warning once again. We're gonna get that lightning hit again. Right about now. And we're back down in the surreal maze. We go in. We find another room that looks like that. And we go south. There we go. Alright, so we've done... Oh. We gotta turn our lantern back on. I don't think the lantern has limited fuel. I think it's just an on or off thing. Anyway, we moved purple. Let's move yellow. And we're teleported out again. So we found the ornament in the King Minos' grave, and it looks like it'll fit this door. And it does! Alright, so I forget how you get this, but I know that Morgan at one point will tell you the true power lies behind the throne. So let's just move the throne. There it is, true power. Another thing of paint. We've got two now. I don't know what they're for, but we got them. Alright, now that we've moved uh, both of the yellow levers, you see the middle bridge platform is in place. So to get the bridge platforms in place, we need to move two levers. One in the museum, one in the... Uh, I think we're protected right here. One in the temple. The ziggurat. So now I just need to move the red lever in the temple and the purple lever in the museum, and I'll be done. I can reach the center. Uh, real quick, I need to make a little side hop here to the museum and move that purple lever. Uh, inventory, car key. So I need to go to blue. Look at here. Move the lever. That should put the purple in place. And now that history has changed, we see that this display is not empty. We have helped Professor Garrett find the Mayan talisman. This unique exhibit is the star of Professor Martin Garrett's illustrious career in archaeology. Discovered in an expedition to the Ziggurat of the Sorcerer King near Ushmal in Central America, this find is an accompanying the artifacts aided Professor Garrett in rewriting the history of the Mayan people. Clues uncovered in the treasure room of the Sorcerer King kept Garrett and his successors busy throughout the 20th century and led to the practically every discovery of importance in Central and South America. According to the legends, the Sorcerer King used this talisman to destroy the palaces of his enemies by using it on the keystones of those structures. Note that part of the decoration shows lightning bolts striking a ziggurat, or pyramid, in the Mayan style. By aiming the talisman at the foundation stone of a pyramid, palace, or city, and unleashing his magical power, the Sorcerer King devastated all of his rivals within a decade. How he was overthrown is not known, however. After his death, his enemies destroyed all monuments to him and descriptions of their reign and descriptions of his reign of terror. Strangely, quite a few of the other palaces discovered after the Sorcerer King's treasure room was found had been destroyed in one way or another. 
New World Development, a division of Terra Nova Development, obtained this priceless relic from the estate of Professor Martin Garrett and makes no claims about the super supernatural power of the exhibit, but we wouldn't want to point it at anything. Alright. Well, it'll be a wonderful exhibit. It's mine now. Attention. Oh, crap. Attention. The museum security system has now been activated. Was me? Please do not approach the exhibits. Proceed immediately to the nearest exit. Let's get the heck out of here. If you require Car assistance, key. please see the nearest security representative. Oh. Attention. Atten Let's get the hell out of here. Now been activated. <sighs> we're free. Oh god, we're not free. Well, they put me in jail. <sighs> well, I guess I should lay down and just take my... do my time. Oh my. Well, that'll be useful. Yeah, my gun. It probably my cold, dead hands. Well, guess we're not laying down. We're gonna jailbreak. Alright, let's pick this lock. Or, let's use the key I found. It actually just opens this door. Yep, if you don't have that key when you get here, it was in the detective's office. You are soft locked. And we'll never get out. Uh, we're back here, but we don't need to be here, so let's get out of here. Alright. Just got that one last bridge section to get into place. So, sound warning, we're gonna get hit by lightning again. Don't you know what the teacher across the street is like? So let's go to one of those places. Oh, yeah. I guess I shouldn't be talking during a <laughs> volume warning. Ouch. So that's another one of those places. Uh, if I go up. Yeah, I see right here. Uh, no, that's the bridge platform. Right here. City Street. Alright, so that's another one of those places that looks like it extends further on. But there's no way to get there. So, it actually looks like these two sections might link up somehow. But, again, nobody on the internet has ever found a way to get through those places. If anybody would like to do a search, there are secrets left here. Alright, so what we gotta do is move this red. And we should have ourselves a bridge. Here we go. Into the center of the maze. Oh my god. Well, hello there. The Minotaur tries to gore you with his murderous horns. The only thing in this place that really animates. Oh, he's looking at me. Alright, so what's with this uh, mirror here? Hmm. Well, I see a mirror. And I want to paint it red. Hmm. Okay then. It's starting to look a little thin there, buddy. We do have another kind of paint. Cretan fresco paint. Ha! It just actually lays down the entire fresco. And the Minotaur is gone. I have defeated the Minotaur. There's a place for the Labras. the lab is. There we are. Ha -ha. The keystone of the maze. Let's get out of here. It won't move. Let's take it. Can't take it. Doesn't open. Alright. Well, we do have something that destroys keystones. And I think it was in the other direction. There it is. A mind talisman. This is the last thing, so here we go. You blast the keystone with the talisman. With the keystone destroyed, the labyrinth shreds into unreality. It certainly is quiet here. 
You have done well, my friend. The labyrinth is destroyed and the spirit of King Minos has fled back to the other world. Now I am free again. After many long years of slavery, I am in your debt. Still, I must follow the evil king and watch him carefully. Who knows what, he plot, what new plots he may be hatching. I chose well when I summoned you from Earth, mortal. Hail and farewell. Why does he speak like a medie medieval guy? He's from ancient Greece. It certainly is quiet here. Say, when you're so where something outside of space and time used to be, where exactly are you? If you'd like to find out, watch for... Oh, this is so sad. It's a sequel. Look. The Labyrinth 2. Lost in the Land of Dreams. You know? I mean, they still sell this on Steam. Maybe Warren Keep Entertainment could, uh, actually one day make it. But, that is it for the Labyrinth of Time. I hit a button now. The game just, well, it crashes. So... Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for uh, talking for to me for a second, BG Shrine. Uh, I'll, I'll be alone. I'll stream again later.